finding calm with creative art. My name is Jamie Lassane Spear, and I will be your presenter today. I work at Child Care Answers as the Family Engagement Specialist, and we are your local child care resource and referral agency. We are part of a network across the state. And we serve specifically Hamilton, Marion, and Hendricks County. And what we do for families is help them find childcare as um, the need might arise. Um, we help them by providing them a list of programs that are near to their home or work address. We also provide parent education, and then we can meet with you one-on-one -on -one and provide support in terms of something that's going on at home or um, if you need resources um, for your child as well. You can find us on social media. We are very active and you may have heard or saw this even on one of our social media accounts. So please um, feel free to follow us. I encourage all families to. Um, we provide tons of information for early childhood, um, ages zero all the way up to age eight. All right, so we're gonna dive into our content today on finding calm with creative art. As you probably know, um, children are constantly learning as they interact with the world around them. And they really need this space to process what they are learning in safe and reflective ways. And that's where art can really step in. Art experiences allow children to express themselves in a way that words just can't or they just might not be able to um, use at the time. So uh, art allows children to explore feelings they're dealing with both on a daily basis but then also maybe uh, some feelings that come up due to a significant or a traumatic event. By manipulating materials with the movement and choosing colors and creating through lines and textures children have this opportunity to really express themselves in a multi-dimensional way. And these feelings or these ideas that they're having on the inside can really be reduced and outputted, if you will, in a manageable size that they may be more comfortable with. So I wanted to share a couple quotes from some famous artists just to really highlight how art and emotions are really connected. Georgia O'Keeffe says, I found I could say things with colors and shapes that I couldn't say in any other way. Things I, things I had no words for. Vincent Van Gogh said, the emotions are sometimes so strong that I work without knowing it. The strokes come like speech. And then Pablo Picasso says, painting is just another way of keeping a diary. I really enjoyed reading some of these quotes because I think it helped put perspective on how art can really just be another form of expression of what's going on on the inside. So because art is this mind and body experience, it has this amazing ability to calm our body's stress responses, really by focusing on the present moment. And when your brain is in this creative flow, it activates uh, this reflective state of mind, but then also it helps children to be able to focus their attention on what's going on in the present. And then it also activates our sense of pleasure. So while a child is painting or coloring, they're focusing on that act in the moment, and also they're getting this sense of pleasure from doing so. Um, most of the time. Art really helps children to make sense of their world, evaluate their emotion within, and then also those emotions all around them. This really brings us all back to a child's development, and art has significant social emotional benefits for young children. For example, when you're making art, you have to make a series of decisions. You have to know what kind of drawing you're going to make or what kind of tool you're going to use. Maybe you have to decide, are you going to create with Play-Doh or on paper or build with pipe cleaners and wire? It is really open-ended, um, especially art that is open-ended, is process-oriented and really has 
this ability to help children develop their problem solving skills. Because really, when art is open ended and process oriented, there is so much opportunity for making choices. And then not only making choices, but then coming to a conclusion about those choices. And then the great thing about open-ended art is that they can start second-guessing those decisions and try something again. And it's not wrong or right. They get the choice to do this and the ability to try. Art also provides children the space to process emotions, especially when they're really big or overwhelming emotions. These are those feelings of fear or extreme sadness or, or um, maybe anger. Art has this ability to help children to just process those in safe and manageable ways. Moreover, it really helps them make sense of what others are experiencing in their own emotions. And it provides them the opportunity to interpret those feelings and emotions of others. So really, art has this great way to help children develop um, not only their social emotional skills, um, but there's also some other cognitive um, developmental skills as well, um, such as handwriting and literacy and language and even science as they're exploring how things mix together. All right, so for the rest of our time together, I wanted to just share some ideas with you on what you can do to help engage children with art, um, with the mindset of helping them find their calm, maybe when they're having a big feelings or big emotions or something bad happened during the day and you know it, but they're not really sharing much. Maybe try one of these activities and have a conversation. So the first one today is this idea of drawing your breath. This one's really simple and it is exactly what it says. It's taking a big deep breath and then using your pencil and crayon to draw out as you're breathing out. So this helps children with just this being present in the moment, but then also connecting their breath um, to their body as well. So deep breathing really helps children um, find some calm. It helps me find calm and it helps a lot of people find their calm. So when you do this activity, you can do it on an easel, you could do it on the sidewalk with chalk, you could do it on a piece of paper in front of the child, um, but the idea is just taking a big deep breath in, and then as you breathe out, you just scribble, you draw and draw and draw until you're all done breathing out, and then you stop. Um, and so that is how you do drawing your breath. You can even explore different types of breath with this one, doing short breath, um, maybe even talk about when you're really feeling nervous, you might breathe like this, and then drawing what that looks like versus what a big, long, deep breath looks like, and then talking about how it makes your body feel as well. Another activity that I really enjoy is drip painting. Drip painting is an amazing um, experience for young children because it really entrances them as the paint falls and it drops. You can use paint, um, just regular paint. You can use watercolors. You can use a spoon to drip the paint. You can use a dropper. Um, Amazon, if you just type in child dropper or a pipette, you'll be able to find tons of options for for your home art kit at um, there. But I'm gonna show the TikTok and uh, see the example here. So as you can see, um, we use sticks and leaves to drip the paint, um, but we also used a spoon and we even just poured it as well. It's really simple, really easy, different consistencies of paint gives different dripping. Um, just do this in an environment that you're okay getting paint and uh, you're all set. Another activity is scented Play-Doh. Play-Doh is really great because it's a full body experience. Um, you're creating, but then also your hands are smushing things, especially if you're feeling anxious or angry. Um, that sense of squishing is kind of gives that, um, that same feel of a stress ball, if you will. 
Uh, but adding sense to it gives another layer of mindfulness uh, to the activity. I usually put in scents like lavender, eucalyptus, because those are calming scents. Um, but you could also use like lemon or peppermint if you want to activate the mind. Maybe they're feeling a little out of it. Um, those scents tend to wake up the brain in a different way. Uh, you can add spices to it, maybe add some pizza spices like basil and oregano, and then you could pretend to make a pizza. Or you could do fall spices like nutmeg and cinnamon and make a pie, um, or just play with it and smell it and see how it feels with the spices. Kool-Aid Play-Doh is amazing. Um, it smells so good. Uh, you have to be careful because they want to taste it. It smells that good. Um, but it's a really great way to make your own Play-Doh. If you just Google Kool-Aid Play-Doh, you'll find tons of recipes on Google with that too. Salt painting is one of my favorite things to do um, when I just know I have some time and it provides this calming experience for young children. We're going to watch the TikTok here to see um, how it's done. But this idea here is that you, you have to use, be very gentle with the paint um, as you're doing it. And so it helps children to really focus on what their body is doing as they're creating. So we can watch here. Um, here we go. All right, so that's that. It's pretty simple um, and it's a really fun activity to do. Uh, I usually do it on a baking tray uh, just because salt can get everywhere, uh, but nothing a little vacuuming can't fix. So finger weaving is something that can just be done as an experience or you can make something with it. So uh, I think it's important for us to acknowledge when we're doing art that it's not always about the end product that we can hang or give to somebody. Sometimes art is about just about the experience. It's just about the process and it's about engaging our senses um, and approaching art as a visual um, tactile experience. And that's what finger weaving really can be for young children. It's this idea of just taking a string and weaving it in and out between the fingers. Uh, it's really simple and it has a very mindful moment for children because they have to think about how they're moving the string in and out of the fingers, but then also they are feeling the yarn. Um, they have different types of yarn, a uh, big thick yarn, and then also some thinner yarn. They might feel different and you could talk about that as well. But if you do have a child, an older child typically, so like a older preschooler or school ager, they might be interested in maybe making a bracelet from finger weaving. And so on the screen there, there is this um, website, onelittleproject.com um, backslash finger knitting. And there they really have a step-by-step -step process of how you can make like a bracelet or even um, a butterfly out of finger knitting which is similar to finger weaving. All right, um, another activity that I have done personally in my preschool classroom, and I do sometimes with my toddler um, in a different way, is just drawing to music, um, putting on their favorite song and letting them draw. Maybe when they're a little bit older, ask them to draw a picture that looks like the song. Um, but another way to do this, and I have done this before in the past, and it brings out some great conversation and, and it really helps children connect their bodies to what they're doing on the paper and what they're doing mentally is putting on just a random classical song, um, maybe something like Fly to the Bumblebees because that's a really fast song and ask them to draw a picture that sounds like the song and so, or that looks like the song. And so they're listening and the Fly to the Bumblebee, if you know it, is a really fast song. So you might see some scribbles, you might see them doing quick little dots everywhere. Um, and the paper might look a little bit messy and that's okay because the song sounds really fast and a little messy. 
Um, but if you put on something like maybe the theme of Salon Lake that's a little bit more melodic and has some, um, well, it's more melodic, um, then it, they're going to maybe make something a little bit different. Maybe they're going to have a like one line going around in different circles and it looks like somebody ice skating on on their paper and you have those conversations and say what does this remind you of how does this look like the song and how does this one look like this song what's different what's the same and it really is just an opportunity to have some great conversations listen to the music and connect it to their hands and then also to their um to what they're outputting onto their paper in a visual way on a similar line um when children get very upset. Um, sometimes they just wanna scream or stomp their feet or squeeze their hands. But another thing to do is to let them scribble it out. Um, and you can teach them how to hold a marker and just scribble on a piece of paper. Um, scribbles are a really great tool um, and they actually could be some beautiful art as well. <laughs> and some, some artists have whole galleries of scribbles. So. I think it's important to just let them and uh, to let them do it when they're feeling big feelings as well. So we have a quick little uh, TikTok here about that. Young children have big feelings. Next time your child's feeling upset, give them a piece of paper and some markers and let them scribble it out. So it's as easy as that. Um, what I like about the video is it just shows different ways to scribble. You don't just have to use one marker or one crayon. You could also use chalk if you went to outside, um, but you could also um, tie some markers together with a string or a rubber band to show a different visual um, output. Because honestly, when I'm angry, I look more like multiple markers. <laughs> I feel like more, more like that end product with multiple markers put together. Um, than just one, a marker with a scribble. So I think children can relate to that as well. Another experience that is, it's an old trick, but it's really great is volcano art. Um, you can put down a piece of paper and pour some baking soda on top and put little bits of food coloring and then drop little bits of vinegar on it. The great thing about this is you can really hear the sizzling of the baking soda and vinegar. And then also once it dries, you can just flake off the baking soda and you have a beautiful piece of artwork. Here's a little TikTok video to explain a little bit more. Baking soda and vinegar is an old trick, but what is really great is that it engages all of their senses. It is visual and tactile, and the sound of the fizz is entrancing. So as you can see, it's a very um, focused activity. I have had students spend an hour on just mixing baking soda with vinegar and adding different colors to it. Um, they find it to be so exciting, um, but then also um, I think because it has so many sensory components, it really supports them in a big feelings type of way. Another great activity is water resistant art. So this is really great because you're giving your child permission to use some kind of tools that maybe you're a little uncomfortable with, but it's not about the tools you're giving them, but more about where you're doing this. And so if, if you give your child a Sharpie, um, think about where you are and what you're okay with um, getting Sharpie on. So maybe this a Sharpie activity is always outside for you. Um, but the whole idea with this activity is that you give them something like an oil pastel or a Sharpie, and then they color on the piece of paper. And then when they're done with the oil pastel and Sharpie, you pull out the watercolors and let them go over on top of that with the watercolors. Um, oil pastels are water resistant and Sharpies are kind of by nature too. Um, they're not as water resistant as oil pastels, but they do the same type of thing. Uh, another great idea with the water resistant art is trying on different surfaces. So maybe doing watercolor on just regular paper on watercolor paper, and then try something like tin foil or wax paper because it's not gonna absorb the water. And then instead of um, 
painting on that. Maybe do drops and then put a piece of paper on top and then you can pull it off and see a print. There's different options there, but the whole idea with this one and why it can bring some calm feelings is that it, it's very process oriented. It's something that children don't have an exact way to do it. Um, they can create whatever they want. And then they're also watching how things um, relate to each other and mix or not mix together. And I'd be remiss not to talk about toddlers. Um, I know we've done a lot for the older age children, but toddler art um, is just as important. And it's just about at this age, giving them experiences and time. Um, and so here's a TikTok just explaining a little bit more about that. I chair art with toddlers. We had a rough week at home, just with big emotions and learning how to do new things. So we slowed down with some really easy art activities. Through art, she was able to find her calm and really focus. When she was done, we created her own art gallery. So that's a really great example there of just pulling out art when your child's feeling a little bit in their emotions, um, even uh, with my toddler, um, that's my daughter. And so when, with my toddler, I think that sometimes it's just pulling out a piece of paper and some crayons can really change her mood. And help me have a couple minutes to get dinner ready. That's important too. <laughs> All right, and then I really wanted to take a minute to share with you that there's a lot of books out there about social emotional development. And this is just one. You can go to childcareanswers.org backslash art hyphen literacy. And that's um, a really great resource just about how you can use books to engage art um, and how you can use art to enhance literacy. Uh, but this one in particular is really great for emotions because sometimes we think in color or feel in color. Um, if I were to ask you what color is angry or anger, I'm pretty sure most people will say red or in that orangey red zone. Um, or if you think of a color for sadness, it would be blue um, or jealousy that might be green. So the Color Monster book is just a story about emotions and how you can feel all mixed up with all the colors inside and it helps children just pull apart all those feelings and put colors to them. Um, so you can make your own color monsters after reading this book with construction paper and scissors and crayons, or you can also create them with clay or Play-Doh, uh, maybe adding some pipe cleaners or googly eyes to the Play-Doh to make it into a real monster could be really fun. So lastly, I just wanted to share that as you're doing all of these art experiences, take some time to ask questions. And, and these questions can really spark conversations with your children and help you understand what's going on a little bit more inside of them. Maybe you say something like, what can you tell me about your picture? It'll open up the door for them to share maybe something that you're not seeing. You can ask them, where did you get your idea? Or what's your favorite part of your picture? How does your picture make you feel? And then maybe even share how it makes you feel. So you could say something like, oh, that picture makes me feel really happy because I see lots of yellows and oranges and green's my favorite color. And you know, share a little bit more about how their picture makes you feel. And then ask questions like, what could you add to this picture? If you feel like they need to spend a little bit more time um, just relaxing, um, or could you add something in this corner? And so just asking those types of questions can really help spark conversations about what's going on on the inside, but then also help them just connect more um, with their art as well. All right, well, I really appreciate you listening today. There's a lot of great ideas here. Um, as we said earlier, you can follow us on um, Instagram. You can follow us on TikTok. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, 